it looks like Kia had kind of lied to all of us about its range. The real range is much closer to about 300 miles per charge than about 240 or so that they have been promising. Now, I'm going to assume that this is a good thing, but it's very odd. And uh, when I test drove this car uh, back in... Um, uh, January uh, in Santa Cruz and as you guys remember um, I did a full report there I mentioned that even though we floored that car for a while the range came up to about 260 miles uh, and uh, you know I was and 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 this was just really just just like abusing the car almost but as you remember today is Friday so Tom Malogny is going to be here in his plugged in segment and he's in the middle of a test driving week uh, and he has a Kia Niro with EV with him right now and he is reporting over 300 mile range as he is driving that car right now. So we're going to bring them on here. He'll tell us a little bit about his experience as far as just charging and range and other features are concerned. But this is really, really awesome, but odd news, if you ask me. Uh, before we uh, get to all of that, just a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byte and check out the all new SUV, all electric SUV coming to the US and Europe in 2020. Check out how fast it is to reserve this a car starting at only $45,000. No money down whatsoever, so just go to the description of this video, grab that link, and reserve yours today. Joining me and over 50,000 of people who have already done that. Okay, so um, let's bring in Tom and uh, see what his experience has been so far. Tom, welcome back. Good afternoon, Alex. Um, I see so, the yeah. car is right behind you there, charging for the first time from what I understand. Yeah, so your followers may realize that I usually do this section with you in my garage because I've got a whole bunch of charging stations out here. I, I test them, I write reviews on charging stations for inside EVs. So I just turned the table a little bit of a different angle today so you can actually see the Nero over here plugged in and the juice box on the wall up behind me. So it's charging now for the first time, as you said. Kia dropped the vehicle off at my house uh, two days ago for an eight day long uh, press drive. And, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of different tests with it. And one of the things I'd like to ask your followers is if there's anything in particular that they have to uh, questions about this car, put them in the comment section and I'll try to answer the question. Or if they want me to try out something with the car, I'll do that as long as I can safely do it and not get in trouble with Kia. Uh, so, so the first thing I did, you know, they delivered the car, it was fully charged, was just drive it the last two days without charging it because my first test was under normal driving conditions. I didn't pamper it. I didn't baby it. I really didn't get on it too hard. But just under normal driving conditions, what would a full uh, charge range be? So uh, one of the pictures I sent over to you shows that right when I pulled into the garage today, uh, I had driven it 270 miles, almost 271 miles, and I'm still showing 30 miles of range left. Now, I did not try to pamper the car at all. Uh, yes, I drove in eco mode, uh, but eco mode in the Nero EV is kind of like a normal driving mode. It, it's not slow at all. It's got plenty of power in eco mode. So I, I wouldn't drive the car, you know, where I felt like it was slow. In eco mode, when you step on it, this, the, the car gets, up, gets out of its way. Not quite as well as it does in normal mode or sport mode. There's three modes. Obviously, you get more power as you move up from eco to comfort to uh, sport or to normal uh, and then to sport. But in eco mode, I think 99% of your, your, your followers would have no problem using that as, as a daily driving mode. So uh, with that and driving normally, a mixture of uh, highway and, and, and uh, country roads that I live on, uh, I got 300 miles per charge on my first uh, full charge, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and it's surprising, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, first of all, 300 miles is great. I mean, only, I believe, uh, Tesla has that really right now out. Uh, but, you know, just like I said, I experienced the same thing. We had the, um, so I test drove it with Fred uh, of uh, uh, Electric and, um, you know, he drove it most of the time and he abused the hell out of it. And it was in the sports mode or whatever the 
toughest, you know, use as much electricity as possible mode. And I think our total for one charge, we ended up clocking it at like 249. So I'm not surprised based on that, that if you're driving into the eco mode, it can come up to 300 miles. But why in the world would Tesla, I mean Tesla, why would the world Kia not report it that way? And most importantly, what the hell was EPA thinking either, you know? Well, a couple things. Let me unpack a couple things from what you just said there. So first of all, the, the, the testing protocol that we use here is the EPA five cycle test. And it, it tests the vehicle under a bunch of different various conditions. Uh, so right now, I happen to be driving, as were you when you drove the car, in favorable driving conditions for an electric vehicle. The weather is, is beautiful here today. It was in the 60s. So I'd imagine I'm not going to get 300 miles per charge in the winter. So, you know, range is a moving target. But for me, I've driven enough electric cars to know that in, you know, in optimal driving conditions, let's say right now I'm in optimal driving conditions. Maybe if it was about 10 degrees warmer, it would be optimal in the 70s. But let's say it was optimal. I know that I'm going to generally beat the EPA average, but not by this much. You know, the, the, this is EPA rated at 239 miles per charge. So, you know, I beat it by 60 miles, which is a little surprising to me. I would have expected to get, honestly, in these driving conditions, somewhere around 270, maybe 275. I would have been totally happy with that. But 300 miles is excessive. Now, let's going back to the second thing that you said about, um, I think you said, what the hell was the EPA doing? Right. So uh, many of your followers, and obviously you, uh, don't realize this. The EPA EPA doesn't test these cars. The, the manufacturer does according to the EPA's testing protocol. They then tell the EPA it's rated at 230 miles per charge. The EPA does not test these cars. And that's many people don't understand that. And I just found out you didn't know that either. I did. I, so, I did not know so that, that either. That's what happens. Yeah. The manufacturers. This test is why I have cars, you here, by the way, to educate to me EPA. as well. So if there's a problem, if people complain, like now that the manufacturer says this is rated at 239, and then a whole bunch of people say, "Geez, I can't even drive it," you know, 180 miles, then the EPA will get involved and 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 you know try to look into it and test it themselves. But uh, typically, that's not how it works. How it works is the manufacturer does all the testing and they provide the EPA with their findings. Now, they don't just say, hey, it can go 239 miles per charge. I I'm sure they hand them over a book of data that, you know, had, that's been recorded. Um, one of the things they do when they're testing it is they freeze the battery so, and then they drive it. So they like cold soak the car. So, you know, it, at, at, at 10 degrees, you know, it can only go 180 miles. And then part of it is highway driving and part of it is city driving. So, you know, they do all these different tests and then they crunch all the numbers together. And that's how they come up with the 239 miles per charge. Um, all that said, uh, the, 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 the Nero EV, uh, I'm comfortable with saying, is going to comfortably average much more than the EPA range rating in, in normal weather. And uh, it's, it's gonna probably perform pretty darn well in the winter, especially if you order the optional heat pump. Yeah, and now uh, my, what I've noticed driving you know, Tesla and a few other cars that usually you come up about 10 to 20% below EPA. And you know, I'm here in California, so the weather here is pretty nice overall. Um, so uh, I've, I, I've never experienced a, a, a range that would be in reality, even though I granted better conditions or perfect or near perfect uh, weather conditions, that would be so much higher than the EPA. And granted, EPA is not really doing these testing, but I guess I am wondering about general general uh, sort of a, a, a discrepancy here, regardless of who's doing the testing. But hey, listen, it's it's good for us. Uh, uh, and I'm just, I like, I like good surprises, right? We haven't had too many of those. And, Absolutely. You know, 
Under promise and over deliver. Yeah. Now I know that. Oh well. First of all, before we get to actually uh, uh, your Model Three here, because I believe that you know Kia Nero EV probably is uh, one of the you know leading. I don't want to say competitors, but you know when people pick a car in their 30s and 40s thousand uh, uh, dollars, they want it to be electric. I feel like those two are front runners. But before we get to that. Um, in these particular features that kind of jump uh, besides the, you know, obviously uh, amazing range, any features that kind of jump at you as, as maybe surprising or maybe disappointing? Okay, well, I'll give you a quick, because I've only added a, a couple days now, and um, the I, I like the regenerative braking system. It has three different levels of regen, actually four different levels of regen. The fourth is no regen which is kind of cool. It allows you to completely disengage regenerative braking and freewheel coast, which most EVs don't give you that option. And, you know, there's definitely times where just freewheel coasting is the most efficient way to go. I, I can think of it on long highway drives. Uh, you're much better uh, just being able to freewheel coast down long inclines. You know, once you climb a hill, you're much better to just coast down. You're using no energy. You're using, you know, the car's motion to continue pushing it. And it just, uh, in that instance, you're better off not regening. I know there's a lot of confusion about what's the best, you know, way to regen a car. And, you know, there'll be some electric people who say, oh, I always regen when I'm going down long hills. And you're right. It's good to do that if you need to slow down. But if you don't have a need to slow down, it's much more efficient to just coast all the way down the hill. Even if you're picking up speed, you know, on many highways, you can go 10, 15, 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, and you're not going to be in trouble. And if you're just coasting down a long incline and, and, and you're not, you know, it's not a safety issue, the most efficient way to do it is just to coast. But, um, you know, so I like that, that the ability to be able to disengage it. That said, the, the levels of region, the three levels are fantastic. The one is nice, it's subtle, it's definite re regen. And I can see how a lot of people new to electric cars um, would like th to drive at that level. Number two, it starts to get stiff. You can definitely feel it pretty strongly. Number three, it's strong regen. I mean, you lift off and, and it slows you down. And if that's not good enough, it's got the paddle shifters. Uh, the one on your left, the left side of the steering wheel makes the regen stronger. The one on the right, makes it weaker, just like the Hyundai Kona has the same setup. Uh, so the regen system in, in the Nero EV and the Kona EV, because it's very similar, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased with. Uh, you know, it, I still think that the Bolt might implement the best uh, regen system, but these two cars, uh, the Kona and the Nero now, are very close seconds. I think that they have the Best regenerative braking systems on the market, better than Tesla, better than BMW. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, some, that's something to note uh, because, you know, especially people that really enjoy driving electric and enjoy using regen for one pedal driving, uh, I think it really improves the driving experience. Okay, now let's uh, switch a little bit here because, uh, as you announced the last time, uh, on, well, a couple of weeks ago now, that you are... You know, you ended up not going with uh, with this car. You ended up going with a, a Tesla Model 3, and you haven't received it yet. But um, now that you were able to drive the Nero EV, any regrets or anything that uh, you, you maybe um, didn't think about before uh, before ordering the Model 3? Um, just as a comparison, I know we'll do a bigger one once you've driven the Model 3 for a while, uh, maybe in a few weeks. But what are your what are your first impressions? Okay, so here here's the thing. Well, well, first of all, I really like the air-conditioned seats in the Nero EV. It has, you know, air-conditioned seats, which, you know, it was a warm day today, is really awesome. I wish Tesla had that. <laughs> so um, that, that was one thing that I really liked. And, yeah, you know, sitting in it, basically I said, I could have really bought this car and been very happy with it. Uh, and it's, it's it, everything about it, um, so far, I'm very happy with it. But then there's this part of me that I look at it and I say, you know, it's a great EV, but it doesn't excite you. You know, when you take a look at, at, at the Nero EV, it's a people hauler. It's a, you know, it's a family, small crossover. Um, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't stick out. You know, I, again, I'll go back to my i3. BMW made it very distinctive, very polarizing. You hate it. 
I don't mind it. Oh, I agree um, with the distinctive part. <laughs> I just, you can't, nothing to go you can't it. hate De Niro. Yeah. I mean, you take a look at it. There's nothing to hate about it, but there's nothing to love about it. You know, I agree. Uh, looks wise, we're talking. You know, the, the driving, it's fantastic. The range is ridiculous. Um, it does everything that you want it to do. But, you know, it's I think one of the, the other publications out there, Car and Driver Edmonds, one of them, I apologize for the one. That that said it, and I'm uh, and I'm wrong. Said uh, in an article that it was like, you know, remarkably unremarkable. I remember that. You know, it was, yeah. You know, it, it's you know, it's just so kind of run of the mill, plain Jane. Um, that you know, there's nothing that excites you about it. And I still like to be excited about my cars. You know, I still like to enjoy the driving experience. As I'm walking up to it in a parking lot, smile and you know, be like, oh, that's my car. I like it. So I think I'm going to feel that with my Model 3 a little more than I would have felt with the Nero. But that's just me. For the for many people, many of your followers, especially people with families, this Nero EV is a great choice. And getting the full federal tax credit, and yeah, you don't have to load it up with, you know, it comes in the EX and the EX premium. You don't have to get the premium version. That's $6,000 more, I think. And uh you don't need the air conditioned seats. They're nice. Uh, but, you know, the, the, this standard comes standard with a ton of uh, things that are optional on, on other cars. It comes standard with a whole suite of safety features. Uh, it has, uh, you know, uh, lane assist and lane departure warning, uh, blind spot warning, all standard equipment uh, and uh, stop and go adaptive cruise control. It even steers within the lane. It's kind of like a you know poor man's autopilot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it 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 and it worked great. I I was using it today. Got confused once or twice when uh, all of a sudden a one lane road went to a two lane road, and then another time when I was making a kind of a sharp turn and and you couldn't see the lines in the road anymore. I think it didn't know where to go. But this car isn't the Kia isn't uh, advertising this as self driving. You know, it's just an adaptive cruise control that also has steering assist, but it worked great. So, you know, honestly, if, if, if you're in the market out there and you're thinking about, you, you want a long range EV and you got some kids, you need to move some stuff around and, and you can get one of these. That's another problem. It's only available in 12 States. Um, but if you can, Please check it out. I think you're going to really like it. This is a really good EV. We should also so mention now, uh, uh, that uh, the lease deal on these are much, much more attractive than uh, than uh, Tesla's. Uh, that obviously, um, you know, maybe not right now, but in the next maybe half a year to a year, you'll be able to actually negotiate the price, but also uh, storage space. So obviously, storage space is um, it's something that's uh, a big deal, yeah. and it, uh, it's obviously a win. Now, uh, remind me, is this a hundred kilowatt charging on this one with CCS? Yeah. So, um, uh, unlike the Kona EV, which I think was was it seventy two? I think uh, somewhere around there. Um, that this has a hundred kilowatt DC fast charging. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't any right around my house. So, what I'm actually planning on doing this weekend, about hundred and twenty five miles away from my house in Pennsylvania. There's an Electrify America site that has, you know, 150 kilowatt DC fast charge stations. So I'm going to set out maybe tomorrow morning and I'm only going to charge to have about 150 miles because I want to get there with less than 25 miles of range so I can really record how long it took to charge. So um, I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the state of charge now. I don't want it to get much more than 150 miles because this place is like 125 miles away. And I don't want to pull up with 30 or 40 percent still state of charge because I want to see how long will this car take at 100 kilowatts when it's basically down under 20 percent. That's pretty cool. And I'm looking I know you're going to write up a, a full article about on the inside EVs. I'm definitely looking forward yeah. to that. Now, do you want to kind of update us what is happening so far with your uh, Model 3? Um, I know you're still waiting for the delivery and uh, um, I know you're excited, but uh, are there any type of issues right now? I think uh, you were you were mentioning uh, something about communication issues uh, last time. Is Has that been resolved? OK, so I ordered it. 15 days ago. And when I ordered it on the website, it says delivery will be within two weeks. If you go to the Tesla website now and 
uh, order a Model 3 and you live in New Jersey, it still says delivery will be within two weeks. So now it's 15 days and uh, crickets, nothing. I, uh, I called Tesla's uh, deli uh, delivery center in Springfield, New Jersey, left a message, said, please give me a buzz. I'm, I'm looking into this. I want to see when am I going to get my VIN because I need to get insurance. And because um, uh, I still just have like a reservation number, not a VIN. And then I also emailed Tesla and said, hey, you know, I'm just looking to get some clarity on when do you think I might get a VIN? And uh, still nothing. So it's been uh, 15 days. And, you know, I, I don't mind that. Uh, I don't mind if I had to wait longer. I have till the 30th of June before I lose the tax credit. I better get it before then. But um, I, I it would appreciate just some type of communication. There really, there's been nothing. Uh, my, my store in uh, Short Hills, New Jersey, has been great. When I call them up, they're responsive. They answer my questions. But re reaching out to Tesla through the, the customer service website and then the, the delivery center where I'm going to ultimately pick the vehicle up from, uh, I've got I've reached out to them and I've heard nothing in response. So we'll see. It's, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the car. I love the car. I love what Tesla's doing. Customer service does not get an A so far. Or a B or a C in my book, uh, and and it's a shame. I mean, I've talked about it many times on this channel. Uh, the 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 biggest contrast be between the quality of the product and quality of the service is, and I don't even mean in the car industry ever. Uh, and it's unfortunate. I, I hope they try to uh, bridge that gap because uh, you know there's. Uh, I mean, I I know for a fact there are quite a few salespeople that I've talked to off record that said it it's making harder and harder for them to sell these cars. Uh, which they really should like that's a concern even right now right uh because of all the uh customer service issues that people are experiencing on the other end and and i would i would include this one in that category even though you're still kind of in the middle of purchasing it yeah i wouldn't i'm not getting too excited about it yet i'm just i'm just reporting on what's going on i reached out to them twice haven't heard back from either one I'm still excited about getting my car. I'm not blasting them. I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, pretty soon I'll get a VIN and then uh, be able to take delivery shortly thereafter. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that, obviously. And I know you'll probably drive it around for a little bit and give us your impression. And, and, and I, you know, definitely going to probably spend an entire uh, uh, segment talking about that. But, um, um, you know, as, as far as in the next few days or a week, I'm looking forward to your review of the Kia Niro EV. And again, uh, I, I can't emphasize enough the fact that it's over 300 miles and real range that this car has, uh, despite a 240, I think, of uh, EPA rating. Uh, it's great news. I absolutely love it. So thank you so much for reporting that. Continue enjoying the car, you know, and I'm looking forward to your review on uh, Inside EVs. Yep. Thank you. I'll definitely have a couple of reviews up on Inside EVs. I'm also, I've been uh, posting some pictures on my Twitter account. That's at Tomalog. You can see it uh, down at the bottom here below me. And I'm definitely uh, posting some uh, pictures and thoughts of the car during the week. So if anyone's interested, uh, shoot over to Twitter and uh, check out what I'm saying. Awesome. All right, my friend, I will see you next week. Thanks, Alex. Take it I don't know why that played, probably because once again I pushed the wrong button. This is the second time today. But uh, regardless, I know all of you guys love this uh, uh, this five second uh, promo. All right, so listen, uh, this is great news. I know I was kind of joking around about uh, uh, Kia lying to us about the rage, but I guess they did technically. Um, and it is a great car. And I think uh, uh, once Tom uh, uh, drives both, I mean, he still needs to finish the test drive of this one. And obviously once he gets his own Model 3, I just cannot wait to listen to his comparison between these two, because I feel like um, most of the uh, most of the consumers out there uh, who will be picking between the two cars, if they want to go full electric with a decent range, somewhere between thirty and forty thousand dollars, I feel like these two cars are always going to be on people's minds, and and I really really looking forward to uh, hearing Tom's opinion about it, because. I mean, he is really just good at this, and this is why I love having him here because uh, he brings up a lot of great points uh, and obviously things that I don't even know and you guys don't even know. And um, I think his comparison between these two cars would probably be one of the most important things uh, uh, for me. Um, now, by the way, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter where we deliver a bunch of uh, exclusive stories on Saturday, but also we deliver deal of the week, uh, deal of the month, actually. 
Uh, and this month we are featuring a lighted tea, which is one of the most popular products on Evanex.com. Uh, $50 off is what the deal they're running on their website. But if you subscribe to our newsletter, you get an additional $50 off with a discount code that we sent to you guys. So don't forget to subscribe uh, at e4lecture.com slash VIP. And of course, a quick shout out to one of my new patrons, Henry. Th thank you so much for joining my Patreon community, the only place where you can watch these videos live. And of course, uh, thank you for supporting my independent uh, YouTube channel. All right, looking forward to your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.